Hello. So uh, this week I wanted to continue with the series that Anvil is doing about uh, lead scoring and healthcare applications. And I want to take a data set that has uh, patients who have made doctor's appointments and we're going to make some predictions using uh, machine learning in BigQuery ML to determine whether or not they are going to make their appointments. So let's take a look at the data. This is a data set that I've gotten from Kaggle. Again, uh, Kaggle is, like I talked about it, uh, last week, Kaggle is a great source of all kinds of uh, great data sets for uh, uh, getting started with machine learning. Uh, so uh, I, ideally, um, there'd be in a real world application, we're going to have a little bit more information uh, about the patients, especially about their past history um, and about their you know uh, past attendance um, in, in other appointments. But we've got a patient ID, an appointment ID, uh, gender, uh, the date that they scheduled their appointment, uh, the date that the appointment is on, uh, the patient's age, uh, the patient's neighborhood, uh, which I'm, I'm not going to include. I don't think there's a, a whole lot of value, uh, uh, predictive value in knowing uh, where the patient lives. Um, and scholarship. So scholarship is an interesting category. So this, this particular data set uh, is from Brazil. Uh, in scholarship, uh, uh, there's a note about this in the uh, in the uh, uh, the link in Kaggle, which I'll put in the description for the video. Uh, scholarship has to do with whether or not the families are enrolled in a uh, a program from the Brazilian government, uh, which is uh, a financial aid program to uh, lower income families that stipulates uh, if the if the family has children, uh, if if the uh, child attends school uh, and uh, gets their uh, their vaccinations. Uh, they uh, can receive uh, some financial aid from the government. So obviously that has some ramifications on, um, you know, uh, having their doctor's appointments, you know, so that, that's definitely going to be important for us. Uh, so uh, that's a Boolean column. And then there's uh, a few other Boolean columns here that are related uh, to the, the health history of the patient. So hypertension here, uh, diabetes, uh, history of alcoholism, uh, and then there's a handicap column here. Now this this looks at first glance that it's a Boolean column uh, similar to these other ones, uh, but if you look here there's actually five different values. So this is categorical data even though it's, it's an int column. Uh, so we're going to want to uh, convert that to a string so that uh, BigQuery ML is going to treat that as categorical data. Um, now this one, this next one, uh, SMS received, is going to be really important. Uh, that's whether or not uh, the patient responded to a text message uh, from the doctor's office. And then this last one, um, this no-show, is, is going to be, uh, this is our, our uh, dependent variable. This is whether or not the patient showed up uh, to, the, to the appointment. And you can see this happens a lot. Um, uh, in, in data sets where even though it's a Boolean column, uh, it'll, it won't be a zero or a one. It'll wind up being yes or no or true or false. It'll be different from the other Boolean columns in the data set. I'm not sure why that happens. It just seems like maybe they do it specifically to separate it from, from the other columns in the data set. So uh, with that, I'm going to flip over to uh, BigQuery. So I've already loaded this, uh, loaded this into uh, a BigQuery table. Um, it has about 100,000 records. So even though it doesn't have a lot of features, there is a lot of a lot of data to uh, to start working with. So I, I wanted to talk about um, the the workflow uh, that that we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we need to do a a train test split. I'm going to do this a little bit differently um, than than uh, what I did in the last video, which was kind of an intro to BigQuery. Uh, one thing. Um, that I, I wanted to correct that I, I said last time. I had said that there there wasn't really a good way to do a train test split, and I I had manually separated into a, a training table and a test table. There actually is a, a way built into the model creation process that we'll walk through in a second, where as you're declaring uh, the options, you can uh, manually. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing it. You can have uh, BigQuery ML automatically do the the train test split. Uh, you can declare uh, a column uh, of your own, that uh, a Boolean column. That, uh, if, if a row is true, it'll be part of the training set. Uh, if the value is false, it'll be part of the test set. Uh, there's a, a few different ways that, that we can handle it. So we'll, we'll, we'll walk through it. Uh, we'll walk through it that way. And then um, eventually we'll, uh, we'll get to kind of a, a workflow, kind of an iterative, an iterative uh, workflow process. 
um, where we're kind of um, uh, incrementally improving the model, uh, looking at the feature set, looking at the weightings of, of the feature set, and, uh, and, and improving our, our model uh, that way. And then we'll look at the next video um, the, where we'll, we'll be improving, um, improving on the model. Uh, after we, uh, after we uh, do our feature selection, uh, we'll look at uh, how tuning works and uh, looking at precision and recall and uh, improving, the, improving the results of the model that we create. So uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to create a view uh, that we're going to wind up using uh, multiple times. You, you use the query uh, a lot. Um, so the, we're going to use the query to create the model, and then we're going to use that query again uh, for evaluation purposes and for, uh, to, to run the, predictive, the, the prediction uh, query. So I'm going to go ahead and just build a view, and then anytime we want to uh, add or remove features or, or do anything to the query, um, we can just do it to the view, and then um, we don't have to uh, worry about changing anything else. So let's let's start um, uh, with a, a view that uh, that I put together. So I want to quickly walk through uh, all the fields that are in this view, and then we can explain. Uh, I, I want to explain. Uh, some of the um, the feature creation that I did, and then some of the cleanup uh, that I did on on each of the fields uh, that are in here. So first thing um, uh, is uh, I just converted um, the no show the dependent variable um, into uh, from true false into zero and one. Um, I, I've seen that done in other places. It seemed to make a, have a very minor impact on the accuracy of uh, on, on the accuracy readings. Um, I'm trying to find uh, some best practice information on how to handle uh, Boolean columns. Um, I, I actually found the opposite was true with uh, features, um, and I converted those zero one Boolean columns into true false BigQuery. Uh, like, like true true boolean columns in bigquery um, it really feels like it could be anecdotal based on um, you know the the training uh, the, the train test data um, so we'll we'll see I, I think that's that one's still up for up for debate so um, so moving on uh, the gender uh, column is uh, um, it's just uh, an M or an F so I'm going to leave that as categorical data. Um, age, uh, I believe, is an integer. I'm just gonna, we'll just take that for the time being. So um, next are uh, the Boolean columns. So scholarship, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and alcoholism. I'm just converting those. Those are zero, zero and one uh, int columns as they came in from the CSV. So I am uh, converting those into uh, true false into Boolean uh, columns in BigQuery. Uh, I did a little bit of there were, uh, a couple of uh, misspellings or one misspelling, so I changed uh, hypertension. Um, for uh, handicap, uh, the handicap column. So that was an int in the CSV file. Um, so we're, I'm just casting that to a string. As soon as that turns into a string, that's going to be the the uh, the tip to BigQuery ML that this is categorical data, and it will automatically one hot encode it uh, when that uh, comes in as a feature. Um, and then uh, the next one, this SMS received, is the same as uh, one of the Boolean columns, so that that uh, goes the same way. This next feature here is um, the first like real uh, feature creation um, uh, piece that we're adding. So um, I, I was thinking about um, you know, what other ways can we uh, use the, the data um, to extract uh, maybe some, some interesting uh, behavior patterns. So I was thinking maybe the, uh, the day of the week. I, I didn't look beforehand to see if there were um, uh, any weekend appointments. I believe they are all Monday through Friday, uh, but maybe um, it, uh, appointments that are at the beginning of the week or the end of the week, or there's uh, other other you know factors that may lead to to missed appointments. So I used um, one of the cool uh, daytime functions that BigQuery has to extract the day of the week from the date time. So when you run uh, these extract uh, functions. Um, you can extract day of the week. It's going to return an int. Uh, I believe so. Sunday, Sunday is a one. Sunday is the first day of the week. It's going to return one through seven. Um, and then I'm just using a case statement to turn that into uh, into the day. I could have returned uh, just the int and then left that, but um, I thought it was just for clarity's sake. I just returned. Uh, I just converted it into into a string, and then we'll leave that uh, as as categorical data. Um, 
So I, I created an appointment day of the week uh, feature. Uh, the next one, uh, the other, I also created a um, a date diff, um, or a, a wait span, which is the uh, the difference between when they schedule the appointment and when they and the actual day of the appointment. So um, there's some there's some data in in this data set about I would say a third uh, between a quarter and a third of the of the uh, of the records the scheduled date is actually after the day of the appointment um, it, it's it's backwards um, and, and I was looking in the in the comments on Kaggle and I'm not really sure uh, what accounts for that um, so uh, I, I went ahead and just set it to null um, if, if that if that is the case um, if they if they are backwards so that that's not it's not impacting or, or uh, not impacting the the, the prediction. Um, so um, and then um, this last one is um, uh, is creating uh, for our train test split purposes. So I, I talked earlier about. Um, uh, you know, creating the train test split. I had, at first I've been doing it uh, manually. It's creating like two two separate tables. Um, we can actually use an option where uh, you declare uh, a train test split um, column. So I'm still using um, uh, that similar trick that we had talked about last week. So I'm taking um, taking an integer. Or, um, so we have appointment ID, which is an integer. I'm well, we're going to do an eighty twenty split. So. I take that integer, we divide it by 5. Um, if it divides evenly by 5, um, then we're going to take that value and we're just going to set it to true. So we, we know that uh, about 20% of them are going to be set to true. And then um, when, we create the, <coughs> excuse me, when we create the model, uh, we know that we're going to have this, this column, uh, which is a random assortment, but about 20% uh, of that column is going to be true. Uh, BigQuery ML is going to take take that 20% uh, and automatically pull it out uh, for the test set. All right, so now that we have the view defined and the, the query defined, let's go ahead and actually create the model. So let's look at what the create statement looks like and what those options look like. So we have create or replace model, and uh, last time I had used uh, just the create, but let's go ahead and use create or replace because we're going to be getting into a workflow where we're kind of continually creating and updating that, that model in place. So we want to make sure to use create or replace. Um, the data set dot and then the, the name of the model uh, that we're creating. So uh, the model type is going to be uh, logistic regression because uh, remember it's it's uh, it's binary. It's going to be just uh, did they did they show up or not. So uh, the type is going to be logistic excuse me logistic regression. Um, and then uh, uh, one thing I had also talked about last week is then you you can either name the dependent variable label. You can physically uh, or, or literally name it label or if you don't want to name it label you can specify the name of the column uh, using this uh, input label calls uh, option so I'm going to I'm going to leave it uh, the same no show that it came in uh, on in the, the CSV file so and we're just going to specify it here and then uh, now we're going to use that is train row um, uh, uh, column that we we're uh, talking about a little bit earlier. So, uh, what we want to do is data split method equals custom, and then data split call is is train row. And so, like I talked about earlier, what it's going to do is if that column if that uh, column is true, it's going to put it in the training set. If that column is false, it's going to separate it out and use it as the as the test set. Um, there's a, a few different uh, strategies that you can use for uh, train test split. Um, and if you just Google uh, in the BigQuery documentation um, uh, for a train test split, there's a or in the uh, uh, create um, in the create model uh, statement, uh, there's a there's a some descriptions of, of the, some of the strategies. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. And it's going to take uh, probably about 30 or 45 seconds to run, and it's going to show up uh, over in the in the data set. And I've already got one, but it's going to go ahead and override it because we use create or replace model.
And then after that runs, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the weighting uh, that it's placed on uh, each one of those features. And then we're going to see uh, if there's any features that we can eliminate. So we've got have some statements that whoops that we're going to be using. So what we want to run there's this ML weights. So let's go ahead and we're going to run this. So what ML weights does, and this is really really valuable. Uh, what ML weights is going to do, it's going to assign a value between negative one and one. Uh, for uh, each each one of uh, the features that it finds, so for the categorical uh, features, uh, they they uh, they come in as an array, so it's nested. So like gender, for instance, there's an M and an F. Uh, for the uh, the the regular like a, a, an integer uh, feature, you just see it um, just see it in the in the other column there. Um, so you can see some of these are obviously weighted much higher than others. Um, uh, so we can see already there's a couple that we can eliminate fairly safely. So the closer to zero it is, the less important it is. It doesn't really matter uh, if it's uh, negative or positive. It's just the closer to the the close the closer the closer to zero, uh, the less important it is. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and comment out weight span, which is very close to zero and age is also very close to zero. So let's go back. Um, let's go back to the view. rebuild the model. You can see the, the weights are going to be different, but it looks like a fairly even distribution and none of these are close to zero. So I think I think this is um, I think this is a good set. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, in part two, we're going to look at evaluating the results and optimizing. Uh, we're going to look at the evaluation functions that BigQuery ML has for looking at a machine learning model. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the threshold values and some of the things that we can do uh, optimizing um, precision and recall and making some business decisions to see kind of uh, what uh, what we want to do with the model in terms of how we, how we want to err between uh, false positives and false negatives and uh, how we can uh, how we can make the best model for what we're trying to build. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you like please Please subscribe for more on uh, BigQuery, Google Analytics, and Google Tag Manager.